People are made to learn from each other. We are social animals. So how do we ensure that our digital learning experiences cater to this enabling need? If you want to get your participants moving further than only gaining knowledge, in most cases, you need to work with social learning. Perhaps you want your participants to gain new skills that they can implement in their day-to-day -day work. Well, we learn best from others, so ensure that you have incorporated a lot of social learning in your training. In this video, we will dig deeper into the topic, what it is, why learning in groups is great, whether or not it's possible in synchronous or asynchronous settings, why you need to plan for it, and finally, some ways of applying social learning. People are made to learn from each other. Our brains are especially apt at reading other people's facial expressions and body language in order to mimic their actions. Basically, social learning theory suggests that we learn behavior through observing, imitating and modeling others. Social learning is sometimes called peer-to-peer -peer or collaborative learning. It deals with how learners share experiences, access content and submit assignments as they engage with other participants in the process. It is not strange that social learning stand in the highest regard, both in terms of participant experience and when it comes to the learning quality. There is both direct and indirect way of approaching social learning. In indirect social learning, a participant may observe social interaction on a forum or articles written by other participants. Direct social learning, on the other hand, involves group discussions and collaboration. Social learning happens when two or more people are set to solve a task together. When you take part of someone else's perspective and thoughts on an assignment, you can combine this with your own thoughts and views in order to gain a better understanding of the full picture. Learning in groups compensate for each individual's limited attention span and ability to concentrate. It also provides a buffer for each individual's bad working memory. However, it's important to remember that the larger the group is, the worse the learning become. A rule of thumb is to keep group sizes between two and five individuals. Three to four is optimal. Another positive aspect of social learning is the sense of belonging. This can in turn increase motivation and give joy. It should be a core priority of any facilitator to create learning environments that are safe and social. Even if group work can benefit from synchronous learning, being in the same room as the, at the same time it is by no means a requisite for learning. Asynchronous group work, where the group has to submit an assignment together, interacting through forums, chat functions, or emails, etc., is still an example of social learning. Social learning doesn't happen by default, especially not in digital environments where the perceived distance between each participant might be greater than in the classroom. So, for social learning to happen, facilitators and instructional designers need to carefully plan and design the learning experience so that it becomes an integral part of the experience. There are, of course, a lot of different ways to apply social learning. Some examples entail group discussions in breakout rooms where the facilitator circulates to listen and ask questions, and perhaps at some points answer one or two. Group work, where the group as a whole hands in an assignment. The group works together either asynchronously via chat forums email, or they can work synchronously via Zoom, for example. A group of participants might meet digitally in order to rehearse or repeat information with each other and discuss ahead of an examination or a presentation. A forum on a learning management system where participants can create lessons learned topics and interact with each other to further develop the group's thinking on various topics. Social learning is great. You should do more of it. There's a lot of ways that you can include social elements in your digital learning experiences. We've discussed some of them in this video. Now, 
If you have planned for a digital learning experience and forgotten about social learning, go back to the planning stage and start looking at how to at least add some social aspects to it. Even better is, of course, if you rebuild the course focusing on social learning aspects from the get-go. Map out the social learning experiences and build other resources as needed around them.